It is a pleasure to be here. I hope you guys had a great, great weekend. And we are here live at the Four Corners Project Studio in Beit Shemesh, Israel, or at least part of us in Beit Shemesh, Israel. And today's guest, special guest, ladies and gentlemen, special, special guest. Every show I open up by saying, we are joined by our associate producer, Judy Hertzfeld from Clifton, New Jersey. Well, today we really are joined by our associate producer from Clifton, New Jersey, Judy Hertzfeld, as she has come on to be one of the interviews of Lenny Solomon Live Show 194. Hope you do great. Welcome, Judy. Thank you so much, Lenny. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. It is my pleasure. Now, I want you to know that this is... You know, the first time we've ever done anything like this in terms of interviewing a non-band member, per se. But you are a, a crucial part to Schlock Rock, to the Four Corners Project, to the Lenny Solomon Project, to Daniel in Babylon. And you, ha you, you are, uh, you know, a very important uh, piece in, in our entire organization. So we're going to get a little bit into what makes Judy Hertzfeld tick. And, and let's start off, as I do with every person that I interview, is here, it's Tampa Bay Lightning Day. You can see our Tampa Bay Lightning jersey. Um, we will be into, you come from Florida. You come from South Florida, not North Florida, South yeah. Florida. Yes. And um, tell, tell the audience a little bit about how you became Judy Hertzfeld and, and how you got to Passaic or Clifton, New Jersey. Okay, you got it. I um, did grow up for the first 18 years in Southeast Florida, that's uh, Miami Beach area and uh, Bay Harbor specifically. And I went up to University of Michigan, which um, that whole trip there was a blessing. Uh, it was my, uh, start of my spiritual journey. I started learning Torah uh, out of, you know, I would say a hummus of some sort and uh, from the start and I fell in love with learning Torah, even though I was not yet observant. And uh, I became, uh, I actually got introduced, thank God, to Chabad instead of pursuing Eastern religions because I was interested in mysticism. My mother introduced me to a Chabad rabbi in uh, Bow Harbor, Florida, that is now very well known, uh, Rabbi Lipster from the Shul of Bow Harbor. And that is uh, what inspired me to pursue uh, Torah observant Judaism. And I uh, went through several, several Chabad. Uh, from Michigan to actually uh, Rabbi Friedman in, uh, in uh, his Beis Hanna Institute in Minnesota. I uh, ended up going to, um, actually that's where I got my introduction to Jewish music. The first Jewish music album was Avraham Fried's No Jew Will Be Left Behind. Wow. <laughs> he is a rabbi. Very Friedman's impressive. Brother. Yes, Avraham Fried is Rabbi Friedman's brother. And right. that was my start, and I have to tell everyone, I will be happy to say that the first song I really fell in love with was The Return. It's on that album, and it, it made me, it was all about my uh, going on the, the journey of a Balchuva. So uh, that was very important to me. So that was my first Jewish album, Avram Fried. I became a groupie of, I, uh, I actually moved up to New York to go to grad school in social work. Thank God I... Uh, looked up Chabad was the first thing I did when I got there and it was very Bashir. There was a Chabad just uh, blocks away and that's where I met my husband. So I uh, did eventually become observant. It took a few years, but uh, I started listening to Nachman Siegel's network at that point when I was, uh, when I was first in New York and I've been uh, a fan ever since of Nachman Siegel network. That's where I've gotten my, most of my Jewish music from. That's where I used to listen to Schlock Rock for the first time. And, That's uh, unbelievable. So, okay, so we got Florida, Florida to Michigan, yes. Michigan to Minnesota. Did you actually live in Minnesota? No, Minnesota was a very brief stop. I was there for a week, at most two weeks. That's uh, the program. That's one cold place. That's one it, cold place, Michigan and Minnesota. And I was there in De I was there in December, or January, actually January for uh, right. a a brief program for Bolshevas that wanted to learn, wanted to learn Tanya and be introduced to Yiddishkeit. So that was really my first uh, learning experience. Was, wow. Uh, 
there so, in um, St. Paul, Minnesota is where the Beis Khan Institute is. Yes. Is, I believe still running programs. But um, yes, I went down to Florida for a bit and then thank God I applied to a uh, school in New York and that's where I uh, ended up staying. In that New is York, a, that's sure unbelievable. Here. So I want you to know that we have done shows in Minnesota, of course. We've done shows in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. We've done shows in uh, in Michigan. Not Ann Arbor, though. I never got to Ann Arbor, which is where you went to school, right? Michigan right. is Ann Arbor. Yes, so right. we But we played, of course, Detroit, Southfield and uh, mm -hmm. Oak Park and all that stuff. Um, Farmington Hills we played in, in Michigan. But I will tell you that it is cold out there. It is cold in Michigan. It is cold in Minnesota. In Minnesota, it was minus 60 with the wind chill going yeah. to shul. So I would say that it's a good thing you didn't stay in Minnesota. No. Uh, but although New York is cold in the winter too, yes. here in Beit Shemesh, we have 10 months pretty much of summer. We only have like two months of winter, and that's probably either January or February or February or March, depending on what the... Uh, What's it called? What the the calendar is when the when the Hebrew months uh, break out. So okay, so here you are now. You're in New York. You meet your husband and you get married. I did. I got married in Israel. That was a story Whoa. in itself because wow. I became I became observant through Chabad. So my mother said, "Oh, she'd probably like to get married at 770." And then my mom said, "What would be better than 770?" As you can see, the hotel behind me. Yeah. Um, what would be better is being married at the hotel. So my mother made the arrangements. Thank God my grandfather had a uh, help in starting and founding the Dan Hotels. That's a very special story as well. And uh, my grandfather, Max Orovitz, uh, helped start the Dan Hotels, which includes the King David. So my, wow. uh, my mother made the connections. And uh, we got married across from the hotel. We were on a balcony. It doesn't really exist anymore, but it was a low, uh, closer balcony to the middle of the hotel than exists right now. And it was beautiful, Baruch Hashem. We had a dinner at the King David. It was, you know, a small reception, but it was plenty. It was plenty. Um amazing. Okay, so yeah. now let's fast forward because we've got to get to the Schlockrock connection because yes. there yes. is a Schlockrock connection. Yes. Now, somewhere down the road, you start hearing schlock rock. Now, when when did this happen? So I can tell you, as I said, um, I was listening to Nachum Siegel Network. That's how I got my Jewish music. And um, I can tell you very clearly, Nachum Siegel was interviewing uh, Yassi. Yassi was uh, managing hotel programs, kosher hotel programs. So Nachum <laughs> Siegel gets the credit. Uh, first, I, let me backtrack. I saw Lenny twice at Camp Shalom and at the Y in Clifton. Right, Camp Shalom in Passaic. I remember that. In yeah. Clifton, Passaic Clifton. I came up to Lenny to tell him that how much I enjoyed Into the Sea. He asked me right. if it inspired me. And that was the first, that was my first hello to Lenny. The second hello was when he did a concert again at the Y in Clifton. And I asked him to sign my greatest hits to CD, or uh, I'm sorry, was it a CD? It was a CD at that point, right? Not I don't remember. And <laughs> I, so I, I don't even remember the Camp Shalom meetings, frankly. It's okay. Of course you wouldn't. So I but, I ended up hearing Nachum convince Yassi to have a schlock rock weekend at his hotel at Kutcher's. And I will tell Oh, you, this is right. This is Yassi Zablocki? This is Yassi Zablocki. Nachum right. suggested to him you do a schlock rock weekend, and he took him up on that suggestion. And in August of 2012, my mother offered to send me and my husband to a kosher hotel for our 25th anniversary. And sure enough, Lenny was playing that weekend. That's right. And not only, <laughs> that's right. And not only was I doing a concert on Saturday night, I did also a Beatles Kabbalah Shabbat. Exactly. It was a full weekend. Yes. Yeah. And uh, it was really nice. Um, I and then we did a, a show Saturday night, which Ethan Bill and Steve Bill played with that's me. That's right. That's right. And I think Shlomi uh, Ash was there, too. Yes, I Ash was just going to say Shlomi Ash was there yeah. being the photographer. <laughs> well, he wasn't the photographer. He just was the, uh, I don't know what he was, but he was He was, he was taking there. photos the Even entire was, time. Well, he was taking photos, but he was really the advertising person. Okay. In other words, that's what he did, does for okay. these places. Um, okay. Excellent. 
So, okay. So, that's so how I And that really... was where we met. And that's my first recollection of meeting you, Judy, yes. at that event. Yes. Um, and it was a really fun, fun show. And, <laughs> um, and from there, s- somehow we, we start talking and you, y- your career, I'm going to, I'm going to call it a career, even though it hasn't yet uh, become a career that we could say. It's not professional. <laughs> well, it is professional. Not exactly it's a just professional. Not, but... <laughs> ma- it's just not making, uh, well, we don't want to talk about that. But so let, let's just, let's just talk about it. You went, you, Jewish music is what you live for. I mean, you love Jewish music. So can I give a plug first? Because before I met you, yeah, plug away, plug away. Actually, before <laughs> I became a huge Schlockrock fan, there were there was a offer that you made. And I thought it was brilliant. You were offering for your 25th anniversary two songs every I don't know how often online, and you were yeah. offering and you put out two CDs, two albums. Right. You put out Kosher Cake. Right. And you put out. Not still not quite on Broadway, right? And I will tell you that those first of all, of course, the Beatles album was the first I listened to probably uh, all, over and over again. Was that was 2011? Friday. That was the one right before that. Okay, well, so on Friday, Friday yeah. afternoons, I would be listening while I prepared Shabbos to a Shabbat in Liverpool. So that was the start. But I will tell you that there were two songs I listened to over and over again. From still not quite on Broadway, and that was supplying charity. And from Wicked, yeah. And God Hand is complete. From I Hairspray. thought. I yeah. thought those were amazing songs. I listened to so frequently. Yeah. The, the second well Broadway as, album is just a brilliant album. I yeah. love that album. But look, they're all. I you know you I have. They're all favorites of mine. People always say, "What's your favorite? What's your right. biggest favorite?" Right. So the truth is, they're all favorites of mine. I love every right. song, m- most of every song. I mean, sometimes there's a song I like less than others, but that album, the Still Not Quite on Broadway album, has such unbelievable writing in it and such unbelievable yes. production with Hanan Elias and Abraham Burke, myself, Mark Smilowitz, and oh, those are the four singers on God's Hand is Complete. Uh, um, okay. And also... Uh, the- there was a couple of others. I'm sorry, I don't have the album in front of me. I don't want to misquote some of the songs, but there were a couple of others. I, like you said, it was brilliant. So that really is where I got my start as a real, real schlock rock fan. And um, and the Kosher Cake also was very interesting. I think that was the one that did half, is that the one that did half uh, classic rock and half pop? Yes, parody? yes. Yeah, so, uh, so Kosher was, Cake has oh. got, um, yes, it's got, Five or six current songs, right. and or, or four, more like four current songs and eight uh, classic rock songs, I think, because we've got uh, the smoke from the altar. So um, that's what the, I wanted to tell you, smoke from the altar. I loved it because I was a classic rock fan, and right. that I was a classic rock fan before I became a full Jewish music fan. And I told you that. That's what I told you when I first met you at Kutcher's. I said that song was very special to me. So, um, yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that as well. It so is those really... two, that was a great album promotion idea. And I, that's what led me to then becoming, a, you know, I just started collecting the full library. And I agree with you, your offer to get the full library at such a great discount. There is so much music you produce over, you know, yeah, so many it's over years. 500 songs. And, True. and, all of your music, I want to say to anyone that questions schlock rock music, all of Lenny's music is is just related to Torah and Yiddishkeit. And that's what inspired me to become such a Jewish music fan and a schlock rock fan is because I was learning Torah and I was learning about Yiddishkeit while I listened to all of Lenny's music. And that it's was so important to me as a Balchuva. So I really uh, appreciated schlock rock. And this, is, and this is why it's important to have you on because you know we always hear from the band and and what an impact schlockrock had on them right but as Mm a you are as a fan turned uh promoter Promoter. (laughs) it had an effect on you as well 
a yes. tremendous effect on you. Now, believe it or not, we're already 15 minutes into this interview. Okay. And you know what we haven't done? We haven't paperwork. done plugging. Paperwork. Okay. So let's just do the paperwork. First thing okay. is, and you can chime in. If we're watching from Facebook, we have four different Facebook pages you can watch it on. Lenny Solomon English, Lenny Solomon Hebrew, Schlockrock page, or the Four Corners Project page. If you're watching from there, make sure you leave good comments, leave thumbs ups, and, and, so, and so on and so forth. If you're watching from the two YouTube channels, either the Schlockrock YouTube channel or the Four Corners Project YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe, leave a thumbs up, leave a good comment. If you're watching from Twitter, at Lenny Solomon, retweet, and you can comment as well. And if you're watching from LinkedIn, we get people commenting from LinkedIn all the time. Sometimes uh, the LinkedIn, you know, we're not, I'm not actually seeing any comments coming in yet today, but which is kind of a little bit unusual, but sometimes restream, it doesn't work on the spot and you could only go in afterwards and see what people wrote, which is what hap which is what happens every once in a while. But anyway, um, if you're watching from LinkedIn, make sure you, you let us know and, of course, be in touch that way. Now, um, the most important thing is that this is the 194th show since I started doing this in June of 2020. And in, the Four Corners Project is the sponsor. And I'd like to ask all the people out there, and Judy, you can chime in as well, and... It, Everybody out there who watches this show, and we've had already over 150,000 views uh, in our 194 shows. We're averaging around 820 views per show. Might be a little more. I don't know. I haven't done the numbers lately. Amazing. But the, the point is, is that this organization, the Four Corners Project, is so important because it gives people a love for the heritage, a love for who they are, and Jew spreads Jewish pride, identity, and awareness through through music, through informal Jewish education, teaching without knowing you're learning. That's the most important thing. And um, we would like to ask you all to go to www. That the number four corners project at org. It's right on your screen, and just press donate and make a nice uh, donation, whatever you want, to keep this this organization going and keep us going so we can keep giving you shows interviews music webisodes uh new albums i'm in the middle of working on three albums at the same time who ever heard of such a thing only springsteen and i do this <laughs> can i chime in now when you're okay when sorry i've been talking too much no i want to i want to support what you're saying i want to let people know that after becoming a big jewish music fan through schlock rock and then others Afterwards, I was always sensitive to the fact that being in the music business is not an easy way to make a livelihood. And I always felt the need to help musicians, to help singers as much as I could to get their music out there and to get attention so that they could hopefully make a livelihood in what they, you know, in what they're doing and doing what they love. So Lenny works so hard. He's been producing albums Schlock Rock itself, what are we going on now? Are we on 30 years? At oh, least? no, 36. Schlock Rock is 36, 36. years old already. Okay, yeah. so 30. I'm not doing the math, but Lenny's been making albums for decades. He's going on the. He's been going on the road for decades. Yeah. And, and it costs money. Everything costs money. Going on the road and making albums, the, you know, the recordings and everyone that's behind it and videos. You just see there's everyone involved needs to make a parnasa so this is what lenny's doing he's providing us concerts on a weekly basis we're getting concerts we're getting interviews and and this is how you know he's doing his work right now in addition to recording these albums he's doing so i ask everyone to support lenny at the four corners project and the blessing is that lenny set up this uh, organization with the suggestion of a special friend, and he uh, set it up to be a tax deductible organization. Right, so you that's can right. Make your, you can support Lenny, and you can donate from your uh, master money. You can, uh, you know, it's tax deductible. It's going towards uh, promoting Jewish music and Torah. So I am uh, fully supportive of everyone supporting Lenny and helping uh, helping him continue in uh, making music for us. And Thank you very new much. Shows for us. Thank you very much, Judy. Okay, let's get back. You ready? Okay, we're, I'm ready. Let's to get, get back, back to the. Let's get, continue the interview. Okay, okay, so here we are now. 
you were involved in, of course, uh, uh, coming to uh, some albums, which we were making. Ethan Bill was the engineer, and you came to that. Yes. You also were involved yes. in, in music video, which we could show a little bit of, um, mm. just to show the people. You're in the Trust in God interview. Should we show right. music video? Should we show that video? I, I know that some of your fans have seen it recently. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, you so you know what? We'll, we're not going to show it. We're not going to show but it. But I just. I will tell you, I appreciate you and Ethan Bill allowing me to join you in studio because I was, uh, thank God, I got to enjoy a lot of recordings there through Knock from Siegel's Network, did their uh, first halftime, kosher halftime show. Right. So that was beautiful. And what was wonderful was being there for some of the recording of Daniel and Babylon, which is such a gorgeous soundtrack, such a wonderful. Well, uh, hopefully wonderful. we'll have some great news shortly about that we'll have some okay. great news that we are that we have funded and we are going to be uh you know but not yet but we're getting okay. there we're getting okay there. please so. god because that that like lenny that was lenny's dream that has been my dream to see that on stage but i'll just tell you uh getting to meet uh one of the the main singer daniel who did the singing um that was very chandler right chandler chandler, chandler played Mogul. daniel in the uh in the original soundtrack, yes. yes. And it was it was just a really enjoyable experience, as well as, uh, thank God, like you said, I've been there you've for a couple met, of other- You've also met the director choreographer of this project, I, I Kay have. Cole. Yes, yeah. yes. So let's get back now to Judy Hertzfeld, yeah. though, for a while, and, and, and for, the, for the last 10 minutes of our interview. Okay, great. <laughs> and talk about, because I, I personally want to know, when you started out um, promoting, because you promote, and you don't only promote schlock rock. You don't only promote Lenny Zellman. You have artists that you love, that you yeah. that they are, and they are starting out and they are struggling. And you, as an act of chesed, as an act of good, of kindness, you let the DJs, the Jewish DJs all over the world, know about new music, about their songs. Um, I know I found out about new artists through you. Um, Yoni, Yoni, uh, what, what, I forgot his last name. Yoni. Yoni Z is, y thank God he's not, I mean, Yoni Eliav. Yes, Yoni <laughs> Eliav, the one, the one who always has the funk, the yes. funk, that's Yoni, great stuff. Okay, so, you know, it's true I've become a fan of so many. So I, I really try to promote all of the musicians, all of the singers that I enjoy um and especially the ones like you said that are lesser known because i feel like it's important to get their music out there to get their name out there so i try to you know try to give everyone as much as i can who i really enjoy attention so yoni eliav for everyone to know he's an israel-based band he is the most upbeat rocking band that i've come across and he provides these uh records funk medleys Every couple of Amazing years. Amazing music. I, I want you to know, you go to YouTube and you put in Yoni Eliav and the Funk Band or something like that. I don't even it's know Yoni what it's called. Yoni Eliav Band and you put in Funk Medley. The first one's 2014, but I became a fan. I'll tell you the connection. I became a fan of Yoni Eliav with Funk Medley 2016. I was so, <laughs> I was so impressed. Now, how yeah. did I find out about Yoni Eliav and Funk Medley 2016? is because of Micha Gummerman. So let me, if you don't mind mentioning, l after Lenny Solomon and Schlockrock, Micha Gummerman was the next artist that I became right, a fan of. Right, and he of. lives in Brazil. He, he lives, lives in, in Sao Paulo, Brazil, originally from Rio de Janeiro. And how did I get introduced to Micha's music? Is because of Yossi Zweig. So Yossi Zweig's Top 9 at 9 contest show is really what made me a turn me into a promoter of Jewish music because his show introduced me to Micha's music on June 23rd of 2015 and Micha's song um, it was a, it's the first track on his second album and um, Rock Simcha and that just became number one and I'm like how did Micha become number one so fast on Yetsi Zweig's show it's because he has so many fans in Brazil so I became a promoter of Micha's songs on his second album, and I would reach out to listeners in Brazil and write to them in Portuguese on Facebook really? to get them to vote for Micha's music on the 9 at 9. So that really is what got, 
that's what got me a start in promoting music as an amateur. And then that led to Eitan Freilich. Eitan Freilich is a singer Right, in he's London. London. He's a London musician. And he said to me, okay, when I put out my music, up, I, ho I hope you'll promote me as well. So I became friends with uh, Eitan by promoting him. And his first album was Am Yisrael Chai. And he has a second and a third now. And I ended up, because of my friendship with Eitan, who's such a nice guy, I went to London twice. I went to London to see Eitan's first big concert. That was a benefit concert for Camp Semkaya UK. And then I invited myself to Eitan's wedding later that year because I really wanted to be there to witness him and Gabriella uh, getting married. So those were two trips That's, to London. I know, I know. I remember when you took those trips to London. Okay, so... so that, I mean, it's really unbelievable. So you, you you like these artists and you start promoting them. And, of course, you've promoted me. Now I'm going to do something off the cuff. This is what we're going to do. Okay. I'm going to mention five different ways to promote. And I want you to say a couple of words or a couple of minutes about them and how important they are. Are you ready? Here we go. Instagram. That's what's getting me the most views. Instagram, I had my own page uh, when it when I got started at Judy Orvitz Herzfeld, but I ended up, after wanting to promote so much, I was, if I can just throw this in there, I was helping a radio station, a smaller station, promote and program their music. And after I left that station, I wanted to continue promoting. So I started my own Jewish music page just specifically for Jewish music. So it's Judy's Jewish Music. Right. So um, that's your Instagram handle, Judy's Jewish Music. I have For now, everybody I, out there that want to follow Judy, get the latest in music, that's where you go, Judy's Jewish Music. And I'm very happy that, thank God, I just got 500 uh, followers on that page uh, that, since I started it. And uh, that's where I, thank God, I do the most promoting, I think, on Instagram, on that and my other page and also it allows you to do stories which are up for 24 hours and that right. allows you to you know probably get more you get more views even that way is uh is on these stories so uh very big fan of instagram it's been great okay yeah. next one you ready yes tiktok do you do anything with tiktok at all i actually only started a little bit because i I just <laughs> my classic no, because rock. really it's my kids that do TikTok. My, my classic my, rock. I you know I I used to be a classic rock fan. So when Meatloaf passed, there was a number of things I thought were so special that I was hearing in interviews that I wanted to share. So I chose TikTok. Truth is that you should know I and I'm sure you know that in the secular music world, TikTok has made stars out of people that no one knew and all of a sudden through tiktok they put on their music and they become huge music stars and, in the and secular that, world it's unbelievable you're right yes. okay you ready next ready. thing i'm going to throw at you do you ever use google analytics no i have not started with that. i don't even know so that i i've heard that that's a good thing to do in other words because okay let's take something like this lenny solomon live show do you know that we could find out who where were people where were people when they were watching the show? How long they stayed on the show? I don't know how to do this. Really? Yet, but really? I think it's I think it's important. Somebody told me wow. that we really need to use Google Analytics to find out where the people watch because we have 820 okay. people watching a show every single show. We have to find out where are they watching from, Very right? Good. Okay. Very good. And the last two are, are you know the basic ones, Facebook of course. Yes. And Twitter. And and YouTube. Actually, Twitter oh, I didn't even have on here. Oh, you're Twitter. not mentioning Twitter. Oh, okay. yeah, let's talk about Twitter first. Tell okay, me. I was I was going to say to you, Facebook was all I had in the beginning. And I used to promote Lenny's music all the time on Facebook as, as much as I could. And I would even be in touch with Nachum Siegel on his uh, show to promote Lenny's music and to request Lenny's music. Um, Facebook, I think, is very still very useful. Even if it's the first and it's a little outdated, it's still very useful for really being able to show the most in terms of videos. And uh, so I, I do use Facebook, but I, like I said, Instagram seems to get more views. Um, Twitter is, there are people that are very specific to Twitter that I like to uh, record, uh, post uh, for, because I know that Benny Friedman and Nissen Black do look at Twitter. So I will... Right. 
right. post there just specific for them because I think they're going to see it. But I do end up now, I use Twitter also as well for posting just because there are a lot of people that are Jewish music fans that do look, you know, that do go to Twitter. So I've, I've found that interesting. There's a lot of humor there Twitter as well. Twitter is an interesting place. Now, I, I will tell you that <laughs> it it's is. also a, a, it could be a dark place because, you know, you, you watch a lot of people criticizing other people. You see that more than on Facebook and more than on YouTube. I, uh, which, I understand. Yeah, I you understand know, and, that. And you have to be really careful because the thing is, everybody, don't judge people on, on these things. I hear you. I hear you. If you, you. If you uh, can't, if you can't say things that are nice, you shouldn't don't say, say anything them. at all. Yeah, because it's it's it it'll come back to it'll come back to get you in the end. It'll come back. To I get hear you. You, you know, I I'm wanted, not talking to I, you, Judy. You don't do that. You don't badmouth anybody. I try but I'm, not <laughs> to. You should know. I try. I try. I know. So what I'm trying but, to say is that is that uh, for everybody out there though, I, I you know, Twitter can be a really good thing and it could be a really. It could be a, a negative. I hear really you. Really negative. But I, I, I like it. I, I tell you, I have four handles. I have at Lenny Solomon, yeah. at Schlock Rock, at Four Corners Project, okay. and at Daniel in Babylon. Oh. I have four different On Twitter, Twitter as handles. Well. No burner so, accounts. You know what I a burner can... account is, by the way? A burner mm -hmm. account is a fake Twitter <laughs> account where you like <laughs> troll people. I don't do that stuff. Okay. I don't have time to do that, everybody. I don't have time to do that. I. That's because, another story. I will um, I will take you up on the YouTube uh, mention because YouTube I've used I, I found a way that you can save videos to YouTube and I've now had I have several different channels and I try to let people know when I want to talk about Jewish music I stop people at the grocery store and in the parking lot to tell them who to look at for music and look up Judy's Jewish music which was my first YouTube channel and I don't even know now. I'm somewhere between 400 to 500 Jewish music videos that I've added. Those are wow. you know, all, all videos that I really enjoy. I mean, those are I don't add everyone. I add things that I enjoy. And I will tell you, I started a Judy's Acapella channel um, wow. for, for this season. Now, Judy's Acapella channel will have acapella as well as Torah anytime or as well as podcasts. Uh, meaningful people podcast. I must say that Torah, Torah Anytime is a fabulous thing. Uh, just a fabulous well, yeah. YouTube yeah. thing. I, I've been watching well, a lot mean. of Rabbi Zachariah Wallerstein. That's what I was going to uh, say. Zechor yeah. Tadik Levracha. The, may he may he rest in peace. The, there are some great videos on there. I just have been watching the whole week. Uh, some great videos on yeah, there. Yeah, it's useful. There's a, I, I include Torah talks from um, Harry Rothenberg, and I include I include a lot of Torah and a lot of acapella music. So if you're interested in Judy's acapella channel, um, I actually separated all of my most upbeat music and made a channel for Judy's Jewish jams. So Judy's wow, you really uh, we have to have now we're gonna have to make T-shirts Judy's Jewish music. <laughs> we're gonna have to do T-shirts. I, I'm glad you mentioned that, but I just want to mention somebody actually asked me for a stream, you know, for a whole playlist of the most upbeat music. So there, I'll give a plug. Yad Leia has been shipping clothing from America to Israel to provide in Israel clothing shops for those in need. And now with Ukrainian refugees coming, it's especially in need. So um, I, I provided a playlist of the most upbeat Jewish music, and that's why I created Judy's Jewish jam. Um, well, I must say that it's it's unbelievable, Judy. I mean, you you're doing you're doing way too much. Way too, way too <laughs> I, when much. When do you sleep? When do you sleep? Do you do you? Uh... You know, I may actually if I if I don't promote something, I'll get some sleep, which may have to happen tonight. I try to promote one or two things every day and night. Now that I'm not working for a radio station, this is the way I get music out there and try to bring attention to. So to singers. I got to tell you something. We got our first comment. Some. Uh, uh, somebody named Charity. Oh no, that's Charlie J. Charlie J says I found most of my Jewish music on Spotify playlists. Now that is very interesting because yeah. I use Spotify to listen to the classic rock of the seventies and eighties. Okay. You know? But you know, maybe I gotta I gotta start putting Jewish music in there. And you know, obviously I've got my albums are on there, not the Schlock Rock parody albums, but the the Lenny Solomon original albums are all there and uh a shabbat in liverpool is on there 
Um, J Rap City is on there. Uh, you know, the thirty out of the thirty nine albums, I think around twenty of the albums are on there. But uh, so I, uh, I'm glad you mentioned schlock rock. I will tell you that I am a big cap wearer. I didn't wear it today for the interview, but. Schlock rock caps are uh, worn all the time around here. I, uh, That's so nice. That's I, so nice. I appreciate it. We have to. We're gonna have to make Daniel and Babylon baseball caps soon, <laughs> so everybody will have to. We'll be able to get that. Um, Listen, Judy, right. you know that we've already been on for thirty. Looks like thirty-five minutes, thirty-six minutes. Wow, unbelievable how time flies. And you really, this was a very different show because we really didn't discuss the music portion as more than we discussed the promotional. You know how important it is, artists out there, I'm talking to the artists, when you make an album, if you do not promote it, it's as if it never existed. You have to think about that. Judy always lectures me, you know, in a good way. She always says, Lenny, you gotta promote this. If you don't promote it, nobody will know about it. And if nobody knows about it, what good is that? You, wrote, you spent time in the studio, you wrote a song, you know, right? You always I tell feel me that. I honestly feel that's why I do what I do because I feel like every song has been is a creation. Somebody, like you said, you can't choose because it's your babies. Every song, right. every song, every music video is a creation. It came from you. It was important to you, and that's why I feel like it's important to give attention to everyone, if possible. I try to tag everyone I can that's involved in a in a music production or a video production because everybody is doing an important job, and for me, Jewish music took over. It did take over my life, but a Jewish music just keeps me inspired. That's bottom line. Why did I listen to Schlock Rock? And why did I why do I listen to Jewish music 24 20 I'm sorry, I'm gonna say 24 six. So say about 20 hours a day, six days a week. So I, I, I need to stay happy and inspired, and that's what Jewish music does for me. I uh, so I, I, I just say that um Shirley Schaffer just wrote in and, and asks uh, what's the status of Daniel in Babylon? The status is we are in the process of getting funding for this project to make it a theatrical live stream, which means that we're going to film the musical on stage, and then it will be uploaded to a third-party film aggregate, which is like filmhub.com or bitmax.com, and then the streaming services will be able to option it, and then you will know where you can watch it. But I will tell you that the great news is that our director choreographer, Kay Cole, already has most of her staff in place, co assistant choreographer, set designer, um, uh, the film producer, the theatrical supervisor uh, who supervises the budget and supervises everything. She's already got those people in place. Thank all God. we need, All we need is what's known as the money producer, which is the guy that produces the investors. So we're, we're close, we're closer than we've been and we're coming up on 10 years since I finished the first draft. So that's an unbelievable, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very excited. I think it's going to happen with God's help. I think it's going to happen. Um, and the, the amazing thing is you can open up the book of Daniel and Lenny has really written his play, his rock musical, so close to the actual book of Daniel. You will, yeah. see, you will really see it. You won't, you will not say, Oh, where did Lenny make this up? I didn't make anything up. It's nope. it's actually the Tanakh set to music. It's the, yes. it's the Bible. It's, it's the story the... of Daniel set to music with with a little bit of um, with a little bit of artistic license as they as it were because you, you that that's what gives it its its creativity, you know. And uh, yeah, so Shirley says, please make sure to promote it. I've been waiting for it for a long time. I am sure so have you. As yes, have. I have been waiting for it <laughs> at this are. point. It's the project that really is the most important to me. Um, so I'm hoping that we'll have some good news and, and maybe even a release as early as either December 2022 or through March 2022. I'm hoping that we will be able to get this funding very shortly and then go right to work. So Judy, I want to thank you for coming on. Thank We've you done so almost much. 40 minutes. It's unbelievable. Um, I think that you're the best, and you are a, a true Jewish music um, promoter and, and, and a Jewish music supporter. And uh, would you like to say a couple of things to say goodbye to the crowd? Hey, I just thank Lenny so much for getting me my start in uh, my passion for Jewish music and for working so hard to provide Jewish content, as you say. 
through music and media because that's how I got my interest in Jewish music. And I will just add a little side note uh, that the others who have given me support over the years that made me uh, encourage me to continue promoting is Benny Friedman. Thank God he uh, was the first one he uh, tweeted his appreciation for my enthusiasm for Jewish music. And that was that was terrific. That was some years ago. And then he's tweeted a couple of times more about my... Uh, he actually said I was the number one Jewish music enthusiast when I uh, promoted him and his and his friend Morty Shapiro uh, as they were celebrating their birthday. So um, Morty Shapiro gave me some nice props on a... Uh, Morty Shapiro is an amazing guy. Amazing yes. guy. I love and, his... Uh, uh, by the way, we have we have viewers from the Netherlands. Charlie J is from the Netherlands. He says wonderful. They, That's very cool. Very cool. Very cool. So, so Rabbi, okay, everybody. The next I, show will be Monday night. It'll be another interview. I don't know who yet, but we will see Monday night. And then the Wednesday night Lagba Omer show. Either Wednesday night or Thursday night. I'm not sure which one because we. Truth is, if it's Wednesday night in Israel, it's still not Lagba Omer for you. So we might do Thursday night show. Uh, we'll have to see. Keep keep it tuned. But next Monday night, we will have another interview of Lenny Solomon live. Show number 195 coming up next Monday night. Keep on schlocking, everybody. Have a Shabbat Shalom. And on behalf of the entire Four Corners Project studio here in Beit Shemesh, Israel, and we thank Judy Hertzfeld for coming on. We say to everybody, have a great, great uh, next couple of days and Shabbat. And we will see you on Monday night. Over and out. Take care, yeah, everyone. Yeah, Stay yeah. safe.